show you that it is actually Jesus, yeah, that was the one who was confirming the covenant. The covenant here has nothing to do with physical Israel. It was the covenant with many. Okay? So, let me first go there. Okay. Go to Matthew 26, 28. Read it for us. So, we want to see elsewhere where the language of Daniel is used. Matthew 26, 28. 28. For this is my blood mm -hmm. of the New Testament, mm -hmm. which is shed mm. for many mm -hmm. for the remission of sins. You understand? He was to confirm a covenant with many. Okay? Remember I told you his ministry in reality actually lasted for three and a half years. And he was cut off. So this language is used elsewhere. Even Revelation, what you think you've understood about Revelation eh, is not actually it. You understand? Eh? What I'm trying to tell you here, yeah? There is a lot of conjecture when you just fix in something. So, okay, now, let me tell you also another thing that is really weird to believe. Eh? All futurists, they believe that there is a gap eh? between the 69th week and the 70th week. That is why they put the 70th week in the future. But, I've told you, according to Daniel's vision, this is not the only place eh, where they speak about Israel being still under bondage. Uh -uh. Nebuchadnezzar's dream has shown that. He has not shown Israel anywhere eh, when they are the empire that is ruling the whole earth. Have they shown it? They are showing you empires. What, what was that communicating to Daniel? That your people will still be under, they are still here, they are under Babylon. There is Medo Persia coming. Eh? There is the uh, uh, Greek coming. Actually, Alexander the Great, eh? in his conquest, in his biography, he goes to Jerusalem, and that is the only place he said, okay, let me just enter without my shoes, because he had seen a high priest in his vision, in his dream, who told him you shall conquer the whole world. You understand? Eh? But these guys were, it is never said anywhere where Israel ruled the whole world. They were still under bondage. When Jesus is telling them you are under bondage, you are not there. They are saying, uh, uh, we are not under bondage. Anymore. But they are under even Roman rule. That's a lie. Yeah? Even Rome comes, they are under bondage. Okay? So, get these things in context. Now, for even Matthew 27 to happen, eh, they know futuristics. So, okay, I, I was still speaking about the gap theory. <laughs> that they bring in. Yeah? And where they put now the seventh week in what? In the future, far out there. Yeah? I've said, Daniel, that is not the only point where he had seen it. He sees it with, uh, first of all, the lion with wings, which represented Babylon. Babylon in all its pictures, ancient walls and all that, they were always represented by a lion that had wings. Yeah? They see a uh, middle Persia, which is a bear, with three ribs, because the main provinces that uh, Medo Persia ate up of Babylon were actually three. That is the bear with three ribs. It ate up Lydia, it ate up Egypt, it ate up Babylon itself. Okay? Then there is um, uh, Greek, Greece, which is the leopard. Yeah? Not anywhere representing what? Then there was a mixed up beast eh? there, which was Rome. Eh? And all of these tried to take over the whole world as we knew it. Okay? Now, if this thing has been that way, eh? and in the statues there is no gap anywhere <laughs> eh? that is telling us, okay, this gap is for the future. Eh? In the beasts there are no gaps. Eh? Where is the gap gotten from? How can you be so confident eh? to be so loud where the scripture is silent? Okay? It doesn't make sense, guys. Yeah? So, anyway, so get to them your future. Covenant. Confirm a covenant with many. Remember, okay, Mark 14 24, he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many. 
Are you hearing the language again? Yeah? Let me go again. I, I need to make you understand that it is the Messiah here that was confirming the covenant. Even Titus, I told you, these were all elements of Jesus Christ. Because when he's talking to them about his coming, he didn't come like in the clouds, but he came, yeah? And he came using Romans. And I told you that there is nowhere in the scripture where they talk to us about a third coming. So if you're saying rapture, rapture should be second coming because he came before. Huh? Then the other coming should be third coming. But when we examine scriptures, there is only a second coming. And now what is disturbing most of these people yeah, in their explanation of uh, all this whole concept, eh? they mixed up the two theology debates of um, they mixed up the concept of the kingdom and the concept of the millennium. Because the scripture keeps pointing to a millennial reign of Christ or millennial rule and all that, yeah? These people say that, you see, there is a millennium where we are happy and all that, yeah? Meaning the kingdom has not yet come, but no, that is very different. The kingdom actually came with Jesus and it has been expanding ever since then. Because remember, even when the stone came, yeah, and hit the toes, of the statue what do they say about the stone it grew into a mountain and say to spread all over the whole the kingdom has been expanding and has been advancing ever since christ came yeah remember he said of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end and you're telling us it's like it paused no it is just increasing scripturally theologically the kingdom is here that's why when he came, he used words like the kingdom of God is at hand. Okay? As in, at hand, it is near you. Okay? So, covenant. We want to see some of these things. Because this is even confirming. Meaning the covenant was already there. Certain things are already spoken and pointed to the covenant. Yeah? Not making just something new. It is confirming. Eh? So what does the scripture really say? Because this type of end time I told you, what it considers, it does consider scripture. Eh? Not just conjecture. Where I bring in all my theories. Eh? So, let me uh, get to confirm. Somebody say confirm. Isaiah 49.8 which is my life scripture, but which theologically, most theologians believe that this Isaiah is a messianic chapter and it is speaking about Jesus. What does it say? Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people. Are you hearing? He was going to give a certain individual as a covenant to the people to restore the earth eh, and to cause them to inherit the desolate heritages. You remember? Abomination of desolation. You get now the language? It's an abomination of desolation. Mm -hmm. Romans 15.8 You are going to understand that this and he was to cause the sacrifice to cease when he commands this covenant. One of the reasons, actually, it was even an abomination itself eh? that Jews were rejecting who? Jesus. And they are still going on with their sacrifices. But what happens? The temple system is destroyed. The sacrifices now are no longer making sense. Even those people that are speaking about a new temple being rebuilt, eh? It doesn't still make sense because I told you all the records were destroyed. The people who are supposed to cut those animals and all that are supposed to be Levites. There is no record. You can't really tell now that I'm a Levite. There is no record. <laughs> okay. Because that was the law. You have to come and confirm. Yeah? And people don't get this. That God started from Israel, but now 
all those verses of Paul bashing Jews and all that, eh? he's telling you that Israel now is spiritual. That's why the covenant was confirmed with men, not with Israel. Israel refused to be part of, and the only people that were helped were those. That's why when you read on other verses in Daniel, he says, those that shall be wise and all that shall help many. Yeah, they shall shine as the stars. They are speaking about, Daniel actually goes on alone. It also explains a lot of events to do with AD 70 destruction. Uh -huh. Okay, Romans 15, 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers. Same language. Promises, covenant, because these are things, the covenant he was confirming is a covenant, because remember he has been praying there, is a covenant that had been given to Abraham for the sake of the children of when he was trying to sacrifice Isaac at Mount what? Moriah. Yeah? That covenant was being confirmed. Yeah? And how was he to confirm it? Scripture is going to help us. That is why Daniel is using all this language of the Messiah being cut off. Yeah? Galatians 3.17 And this I said, the law which was 430 years later cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ that it should make the promise of no effect. This covenant was confirmed. And remember here, this is not conjecture really. The scriptures above have been speaking about who? Messiah, the prince. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9, 15. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Are we together? He is that mediator of the new what? covenant. It had been prophesied. Now, 16 says it clearly. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. You see why he had to be cut off to confirm the covenant with many. So that is very logical. The scripture is starting out by he was cut off. Then it goes ahead to tell us he confirmed the covenant with many. It makes sense. Yeah? Why are people inserting Antichrist? I don't know. Yeah? All right. Uh, 17. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. So Christ, 28, Hebrews 9, 28, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. Many versions are speaking about this many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time. Not a third time. Mkakuwa atako. Eh? Hebrews 9.28. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear eh? Those are things that used to disturb me when they are preaching to me rapture and then, and this one is saying second time. May I ask, Kati, will that be second or third time? Yeah, they will give you Bambi an answer that is really vague. Because even them, it's not like they've thought through these things. They are just telling you what they've heard from other people teaching. Eh? He'll appear a second time. Second coming. Eh? Apart from sin for salvation. Now, here, Hebrews 12, 24. Hmm? Even the scripture says he is the author and finisher of our faith. Why? He authored this covenant. He was the one to finish it. Yeah? So Daniel is seeing all of these things. He's seeing what Israel is going through. But he's seeing the hope, which is the Messiah that is supposed to come. And they are supposed to crown him by anointing him, by saying he's the one. You understand? But they rejected him. And when they rejected him, they received the thieves and all of those kinds, the Barabbas and all of that, yeah? Which wasn't very good for them. Yeah? And then, here we are in Edward, 
70. Yeah? Hebrews 12, 24. I've read there a lot of scriptures to help you understand this. Eh? So you can't now leave a lot of this evidence when you're building doctrine. Eh? And you go to a thing that has no evidence. Show me one scripture where, apart from this part, where they're saying the Antichrist. They are using the Antichrist categorically. is confirming a covenant with many. This is the only part that those people tie themselves to, like they misuse a lot of scripture. This is abuse of scripture. Yeah? To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. He's the mediator. He was. Hebrews 13, 20. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. What were they also telling us that he's supposed to come in Daniel 24? Okay. Go back. Move here a bit. Seventy weeks at 77 are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Okay? To finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. What did Jesus say? It is finished. He is the one who was to fulfill this. This is a prophecy about Jesus. Look at the things they are speaking about. Have they said to bring iniquity? Where are you getting Antichrist? Because Antichrist is supposed to be the opposite of Christ. Eh? Read it in context. What work? Who, who did these works? So you get who he is talking to about? Then we're not just. And this is the thing that I'm telling you. Some of these things have been sold to you very well because actually fear sells. You understand? Eh? Look at all those news channels eh? that do 24 news, uh, whatever, eh? coverage and all that. What are they selling to you? Fear. Yeah? Even some of us, God gives us those prophecies. Eh? It is evangelism tool. But there is even a higher realm than that. You understand? Eh? Fear sells. Most of you people, by the way, let me tell you, it's just general. Most of you have kamanyiro on people who actually respect you and honor you. That is why you find ladies with abusers. Eh? The gentlemen at all time, yeah, eh? they don't like. They want ragamuffin. Eh? They corner you today, tomorrow you're pregnant. I mean, that is what I'm trying to talk about. Eh? It is just a thing, a fallen state that has been instilled in us, but we shouldn't be that way. Yeah? And this is the gospel we are enjoying. God is telling you, Jesus must be held up until the restoration of all things. You want a gospel of the destruction of all things. Yeah? So, that's what I've, I've told you. Fear what? Sales. Eh? Whose works are these? Eh? 24. Seven weeks are determined upon thy holy people and thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. He became sin that you may become the righteousness of God and to make reconciliation for iniquity. The Bible says we were once enemies. Eh? But why did Christ come? To reconcile us unto the what? The Father. Okay? And to bring in everlasting righteousness. That's why I read the last scripture I've just read for you. Who brought it? Yes. And to anoint the most holy one. And I told you, he was prince of peace. We are supposed to elevate him to king of kings. You understand? And that is actually what happened. 